Eyewitness News presents Newsmakers with your hosts, Jane Ann Bugda and Andy Mahalshek. Hello and welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Jane Ann Bugda. It is the ultimate party and it's happening in 2026. America turns 250 years old and Pennsylvania is playing a very important role in the celebration. I'll be joined by the executive director of America 250 PA. I'll introduce you to Cassandra Coleman and we'll get this party started when Newsmakers returns right after this. Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Jane Ann Bugda. We're getting ready to celebrate a milestone. 250 years, America's turning 250 years old and Pennsylvania is the key, the keystone state to the party. And uh, that's what we're gonna be talking about today, America 250 PA. I am joined by Cassandra Coleman. She is the executive director of America 250 PA. It is the ultimate party. It's already started, so we're gonna hear about all the events, everything leading up to, uh, to uh, 2026. But Cassandra, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And before we you know, start getting into the, um, the whole celebration, I want people to get to know you. <laughs> because I think it's very, very exciting that we have someone right from our area, from northeastern Pennsylvania, who's heading up this major celebration. So you're from Exeter, you're, you're a Luzerne County young yes, woman. So bor born and raised in Exeter Borough, mm -hmm. a graduate of Wyoming area, proud warrior, mm -hmm. um, and a graduate of King's College. I, I'm a King's College <laughs> grad as well, so uh, so I'm very happy that you're here. But you also you know, had an early start in community service, and we have um, some video. You were also mayor I was. Of, of, of Exeter for a while. Tell us a little bit about that. We have some video of when you were being sworn in yeah. and this and I, that's why I think it's so important that people get to know who, who you are. Yeah, so my grandfather um, was a 30 year public servant here in Exeter Borough um, at unfortunately when he was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor uh, was past practice in the borough that uh, a family member would fulfill a term. Mm -hmm. So I was appointed as the mayor of Exeter Borough um, at the age of 20. At that time I was the youngest serving female mayor in the country. Um, it was an honor of a lifetime um, and honestly I think that you know my grandfather still continues to watch over me. And your um, grandfather please tell everybody who he was. My grandfather was Joseph Coyne mm -hmm. um, again 30 years uh, council president and mayor of, of the borough um, but again uh, being mayor was one of the the greatest times in my life. Um, I, I was appointed and then re-elected twice. Mm -hmm. um, from there I went to work for um, Senator Bob Casey and then um, went to work for the Wolf Administration, which is what led me to America 250 PA. And that's that's where we are today. We're, um, we're getting ready to make a celebration. Pennsylvania is uh, part of this big celebration. So um, tell us how it all started. How did yeah. it, yeah. So I, as I mentioned, I worked for the Wolf Administration and um, we actually, this, this came to my desk as part of a piece of legislation that was passed in a bipartisan effort back in 2018. This was actually created in response to congressional legislation that was passed in 2016 by Congress. In that piece of congressional legislation, they actually identified five priority cities of celebration. Um, one of those being Philadelphia. So Pennsylvania, the birthplace of democracy, mm -hmm. decided to get out first. Um, we created this commission, the Pennsylvania Commission for the United States Semi-Quincentennial, which you cannot say I, I know, I was gonna five say, times I'm glad you said that, yes. So um, <laughs> we are known as America 250 PA. Um, so again, it was a bipartisan effort and continues to be bipartisan effort. So tell us a little bit about the, the Commission PA. Who's all part of it? Who's, mm -hmm. You have a, quite a, a, an illustrious uh, staff uh, that's helping you with this. We do. So we have um, 24 appointed members. Um, each caucus of the legislature and the governor have their appointments. We also have all of the former governors as well as our current governor serving as our co-chairs along with our chairman, Patrick Burns. Um, we also have 15 ex officio members. They are some of the larger state agency secretaries and our attorney general, our auditor general, and our treasurer. So that's quite the committee. <laughs> so, and how about each county? Um, each county as well has a uh, a, a county a representative. Of? They do. So, very early on, we wanted to ensure geographical representation um, through the commission and through all of our efforts. So, we have county appointed members that are appointed by each county government. Um, I will say, I'm very as you as we just discussed. My background's in local government, um, county engagement, local borough, township, city engagement really can ensure a successful 
semi-quincentennial. So we've actually taken that a step further. We've asked counties to not only appoint a member, we've asked them to pass the America 250 PA resolution. We have 60 of our 67 counties wow. that are our official partners. We're working on those last yeah. seven. Um, and we've actually taken it a step further, even lo more local. We've asked local municipalities to pass the America 250 PA resolution. And again, a bit biased, mm -hmm. but we have over 260 local municipalities who have taken the time wow. to pass the resolution and become official partners. So everybody's really getting excited about this event that's coming up. So you were saying about the, the counties getting involved. And while we're talking, we have a lot of video of some of the events that have already started um, across, across the Keystone State across the Commonwealth. So um, is each county hosting something different or are they all sort of doing the same type of? Uh so every county obviously and every municipality is so full of its own history. Every Everyone has so much to be proud of in their communities. So we've asked everyone to kind of row in the same direction under the umbrella of the state commission. Um, and then we're working with each county to really package all of that up and then highlight that for, you know, we want to increase tourism to this Commonwealth across the board, all 67 counties. We want not only national but international tourists to come and visit the Commonwealth yes part of their you know their visits to the United States for 2026 so um, we are kind of across the board making sure that every county is part of this in some way shape or form and all of our programming projects and events are being implemented in all 67 counties so you know uh, you said interest that you're looking this is the launch video so you're looking um, at uh, some of the uh, counties. so how has the the interest been so far as you have gone to community to community mm -hmm. it has been amazing um, and the approach of really going into communities listening to them learning about their communities and again as a former mayor you know you want to show off your town. You want to walk the main street. You want to talk about what's most important to you and your constituents and your communities. Um, the approach has been widely um, accepted um, and it's it's been amazing. The Just the response, everybody has something to be proud of. Right. So how do we then again take that information and really showcase this Commonwealth as a whole? I know we're looking now, you may have a community out there, a small borough or a town that mm -hmm. says, oh, this sounds like something we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, what can they do? How can they reach out? What yeah, should they so do? Yeah, so they should go to America250PA.org to get more information under our official partners um, tab. We also have a nonprofit affiliate program. This is for any nonprofit in the Commonwealth who wants to get involved. These are the folks we go to first when we're planning, when we're developing programming. Also the folks we go to first when we need meeting space or places to house our bells or any of our different projects. And um, when did it officially kick off? What were some of the first events that you started with this? Because this, for, for uh, a relatively new, mm -hmm. you've been pretty active because all you have to do is go on, that, on your website to see the, the number of events. So tell us about some of the events that have already started. Yeah, so um, we have a number, about a dozen programs and projects right now. A lot of the events are going to be happening in 2026. We do a fall and a spring reception and such every year, but we have over a dozen programs and projects. And those programs and projects are actually available in all 67 counties. So we do encourage folks to again, go to the website to learn what's available in in their counties or regions. And even individuals, if they mm -hmm. want to get involved in doing yep. something as well. Because it's, it's, we're, all, we're all part of Pennsylvania and yeah. this is all part of a great way to get involved. Now, um, like we're looking at some of these events that have happened mm -hmm. over the past. Is there any particular event that you like the, the best so far? Mm -hmm. Or is there, are, are, I know they're all yeah. your favorite, but are there? Yes, I would. I would have to say um, probably two. I'm a little biased. Um, we were able to bring the Keystone Classroom Initiative, which is our children's program, uh, pre-K through four, to Wyoming area, which of course is, is my alumni and where my son, mm -hmm. who is going to be nine, is going into the third grade. So being able to bring that program back to the schools that I grew up in mm -hmm. um, and see the children and just their excitement and be able to engage. That's the key, being able to engage the next generation but at their level right. um, which is a storybook and you know mascots and a, and a coloring book that you see here on the mm -hmm. on the table a backpack that is our way of really engaging those students so that Jane in 50 years mm -hmm. they can look back and say we were part oh, of history right. it may not be you know in some 
big, big way, but again, we're creating that memory that is allowing them to be part of history. Mm -hmm. um, second to that, I will say, um, we just actually dedicated last month our first semi-quincentennial bell mm -hmm. at the Dennis Farm in Susquehanna County. I think we have some video of that. The so. Dennis Farm is actually the longest continuously owned African-American owned farm in the country, here in the Commonwealth. Um, we're utilizing the semi-quincentennial bells, these beautiful bronze permanent bells, to be able to tell those untold stories that may have been left out of the history books. And now the Dennis Farm story and the grit and perseverance of these ancestors. We actually had the eighth generation of the family there with us to wow. unveil this bell. Um, it just goes to show how important communities and their stories are to the history of this Commonwealth. And how important is it for young people? Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned about in, in being in school. What a, an incredible opportunity for um, educators to get involved in this yeah. program to, to talk about not only, you know, America's history, but Pennsylvania's history, which mm -hmm. sometimes I don't know if we, if um, our young people realize the rich history that, that Pennsylvania holds. Pennsylvania is so full of history. And, you know, we are so excited to be able to highlight that and to be able to, again, reach that next generation of Pennsylvanians and engage them in a way that not only, you know, educates them, but we look at this as a true opportunity. We look at this as an opportunity to learn from our history, really embrace our present and reimagine our future. Mm -hmm. And these students and this next generation, my Jimmy, mm -hmm. that's that's who we're doing this for. Right. We're trying to reimagine the future. Because I remember the bicentennial, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> uh, back when, and I was, uh, you know, I was young then, a kid then, and I remember the excitement, you mm -hmm. know, that grew with that. So this to me is, you know, a new generation learning, you know, all about, again, what America is, what America stands for, what Pennsylvania mm -hmm. is. And your mission, you know, for to 2020 is to educate, preserve, innovate, and celebrate. Mm -hmm. So let's let's break yeah. that down. Let's yeah. talk about, we talked about educate. So but educate on two parts, right? Educate our next generation, engage them, but also highlight the amazing educational institutions we have here in the Commonwealth. Um, preserve, um, and obviously, ep so, Educate, Preserve, Innovate, and Celebrate stands for EPIC. Okay. We want 2026 oh, okay. to be EPIC, E-P-I-C. So preserve, we want to preserve the history here in the Commonwealth that already exists. We want to preserve it so that next generation, so it's here for them to enjoy and learn from. Um, innovate. Pennsylvania, all of the contributions that Pennsylvania has had to this country over the last 250 years and in the innovation and tech side and everything that we've done here. Um, and then of course celebrate. Um, we wanna make sure that every county and every Pennsylvanian feels that they could be part of the semi-quincentennial and that we do believe everyone has something that they're proud of that they wanna celebrate in their community, why they chose to raise their families there, build their businesses mm -hmm. there. Um, and again, it, it's, a, it's a Pennsylvania pride thing for us at America 250 PA. And I know we talked a little bit about the, the Keystone, uh, the class, Keystone Classroom mm -hmm. Initiative. Tell us just to expand a little bit more about that, about how it's reaching our young people. Yeah. And it, it, is, and it, it reaches them not only during the school year, but right around. Yes, so um, the Keystone Classroom Initiative is our pre-K through four program. And this is a program that we partner with historical reenactors and local mascots and local celebrities. Mm -hmm. Your own Candace mm -hmm. Kelly and Chris Bohinski joined us right. um, at our school visit at Wyoming area and we go into the classrooms and we engage with the students we read K is for Keystone which is a Pennsylvania authored and illustrated book by Pennsylvanians um, and then we give out America 250 PA backpacks mm -hmm. full of Pennsylvania goodies like Hershey's and um, natural food source juice boxes Utz products and they we have an America 250 PA coloring book all about Pennsylvania it's in five different languages oh, wow. okay. and we also um, have Pennsylvania excuse me Crayola crayons. Mm -hmm. um, they've actually donated 50,000 uh -huh. boxes of Crayola crayons and this program, the Keystone Classroom Initiative, will reach 50,000 students across this Commonwealth by 2026. And you mentioned something interesting. You said, you know, it's in different languages because mm -hmm. we are now a melting pot yes. in our area. So how important is that in getting those young people involved as well? It's actually extremely important and we had um, an, a visit in Philadelphia. Um, and it was th at that visit that we learned that the students in the ESL program were able to truly engage and enjoy this visit because 
again, the coloring book was mm -hmm. in their language. Um, so we just want to make sure that every Pennsylvanian feels that they can be part of 2026 and America 250 PA. And you know, you're talking about, you know, students. What about the college level? Are they, uh, they're actively involved as they well? They are. Um, so we actually have our Direct Effect Innovation Challenge. We're going into our fifth year, actually launching next month in September. Um, this college program challenges Pennsylvania college students to come up with integrated marketing concepts to help America 250 PA in our efforts. And like I said, we've, we're going into our fifth year. Um, the challenge will be announced by the Secretary of Education next month, mm -hmm. and it'll run from September through November. The final team the final five colleges come to the Capitol and oh, present wow. their projects on the at the Capitol Media Center on the stage at the Capitol, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I'm, I'm proud of this. We've actually hired full time two participants of the Direct Effect Innovation Challenge. Oh, wow. Pennsylvania talent, we want to keep them here. We want to connect that talent with Pennsylvania businesses because again, we, we want to keep that next generation in the Commonwealth. What type of projects are you seeing from the from the young people? So the, they're specifically marketing. So so they come up with ways to answer the challenge that year. So in the past, um, during COVID, we actually had a challenge of how to uplift Pennsylvania businesses and promote to buy Pennsylvania. Um, last year, we had a challenge that was called the future is youth. How do we engage the next generation mm -hmm. of Pennsylvanians? And this year's challenge, like I said, I can't release it yet, okay. but will be released by the Secretary of Education, and I think it will, it'll really help us engage different communities. You know, we're talking about um, youngsters and that, but then we also have our older generation, our seniors. Is there anything out there for them? I mean, they have a lot of stories to tell, mm -hmm. you know, from what they lived through, you know, in, in their time here in Pennsylvania. Is there anything more uh, towards them for seniors? Yeah, so we actually, um, we have a ton of volunteer opportunities opportunities with us. We also have um, people can submit ideas for our podcast, um, oh, which is available on our website as well. Um, and we're also, we ask people to go to our website or reach out to us with your Pennsylvania pride stories and what makes you Pennsylvania proud. And yes, you know, the folks that um, experienced the bicentennial in 1976, we want to hear from them. We want to hear what that experience was like. And we want to make sure, like I said, that everybody feels that they could partake in the 2026 activities. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, a lot of our veteran groups and mm -hmm. a lot of our um, that are that are interested. Mm -hmm. What opportunities do they have? Yeah, so our veterans, specifically our service members, we have over 800,000 active and retired service members here in the Commonwealth. We actually have a service member spotlight series on our website. All of your viewers know a, an active or retired service member. I can guarantee that. Well, we're so big with veterans' I, views yes, and veterans' voices, so we know that we, we have a, a great deal of veterans who... Yes, especially in this region. Um, so I would encourage the viewers to go to our website and nominate a service member. These are also service members that in 2026 will be doing a large Veterans Day event honoring them and presenting them with a commemorative 2026 pin. We also have a memorial flag initiative, which is in partnership with DMVA and the local um, county veterans offices where we will help supplement not only funding, but also volunteers to ensure that as many Pennsylvania service member grave sites have an American flag from Memorial Day through Veterans Day in 2026. Oh, that's, 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 that's nice to know. So veterans groups out there can contact <laughs> you and, and get involved. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we do get involved with a lot, a lot of veterans. Um, in our in our region, so I'm sure you know they're they're going to be very interested in getting involved. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to continue our uh, conversation. America, 250 PA is our topic today, and you are watching Newsmakers. You can find information on today's program on pahomepage.com or under the Newsmakers link. And you are watching Newsmakers, a proud recipient of three Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasting Awards for Public Affairs Programming and a Keystone State Award for Best Talk Show. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Jane Ann Bugden. My guest today is Cassandra Coleman. She is the Executive Director of America 250 PA celebrating um, the uh, birth of America 250 years in 2026 but the party's already started the events are many and um, we're getting a, a overview of, of what's going on but tell us a little bit about Pennsylvania Day. 
Sure. So Pennsylvania Day was um, an effort that was extremely important to me. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had a volunteer component to the activities around the 250th. So we launched Pennsylvania Day. Um, this was actually our third year. It's July 20th, which is National Pennsylvania Day. And we thought, what better than being able to get out and volunteer, encourage people across the Commonwealth to volunteer. So we launched this in 2021, which was obviously the year after COVID. People were still dealing with food insecurity. Mm -hmm. We saw how much our food banks across the Commonwealth stepped up to truly help all of our neighbors. So we partnered over the last three years with Feeding Pennsylvania. Um, total, we've had over 800 volunteers out across the Commonwealth at over 29 wow. sites, packaging over 21,000 boxes of food. And this past year, we're really excited. We actually partnered with Keep Pennsylvania Beautiful as well. So we funded 11 community cleanup projects to get the Commonwealth ready for 2026 as we welcome visitors. Oh, wow. So it's a lot going on, a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. But one of the other projects I want to ask you about, because I, I like this one, is the Liberty Tree Project. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. That is, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, so the Liberty Tree Project is actually... Um, in partnership with the Pennsylvania Freemasons, where a certified Liberty Tree will be placed and planted in all 67 counties at a site that has revolutionary history. Oh. These trees are actually um, propagated from the original Liberty Tree, which is a tulip poplar that the revolutionaries used to make their plans under. Mm -hmm. um, so again, every county will have one of these trees by 2026. Oh, that's that's amazing. I think that I like when I was mm -hmm. looking at this, and I, and I think this is such an. Uh, a, a nice project, such an important project. It is. So, you know, we're looking at all these projects, all these events. How are you funded? <laughs> <laughs> that is the, usually the, the, the million dollar question, right. no pun intended. Um, so we are actually a true uh, public-private partnership. Um, it's been amazing. The community, the um, private industry across this Commonwealth stepped up and believe that we need to, again, be in this partnership together with the Commonwealth, and the Commonwealth has provided dollar-for-dollar -dollar funding. So, and if somebody, there's also, if somebody wants to give a donation, say somebody out there is watching a business mm -hmm. or a nonprofit or something that says, I want to be a part of this and have my name associated to this. They should reach out to America250PA.org. Um, there's information there that they could submit. And we, of course, are, we would love for as many businesses mm -hmm. and folks in the private industry to, to join us on our growing list of, of sponsors and supporters. Now we have a little ways to go before we hit 2026. Is there anything in the future that you're looking forward to that you can give us a little hint about or yeah so we are now working on our um, schedule of events for 2026 so stay wow. tuned at what large scale events may be coming again to the Commonwealth in different regions um, we'll give you a little tip of maybe we'll be doing a traveling concert series oh, okay. um, oh, that's nice to know really okay. really exciting stuff happening in 2026 as far as signature events so I encourage your viewers to stay tuned and this will not be your first visit here because we will <laughs> have you back as we go because we want to learn more today we, we wanted to get people you know excited and mm -hmm. they're hearing about it they're seeing the events but I think they I want to give them like a true uh, overview of mm -hmm. all the wonderful uh, opportunities and educational programs and and a way for business and industry to get involved you know everybody can be a part of this and get excited about it but uh, let's just go over it again now how can individuals nonprofits and businesses get involved so we just encourage everybody again to go to America 250 PA.org and join us and become a part of history so you know as we're heading again like I said you're now we're getting into the the winter months do, do your seasons kind of change do your events change for season to season or are you just kinda? no so all of our, our dozen ish programs and projects run year round mm -hmm. the majority um, you know the school one of course is Great. during the school year but yeah we're getting ready to, to really kick off a really busy fall we have our Northwest Pennsylvania launch coming up in Erie um, next month so that'll be the last region of the Commonwealth that we have left to launch um, and then again, we're just really trying to engage all of the counties and every Pennsylvanian. Now, have you heard from, you know, you, you were a mayor yourself. Mm -hmm. Have you heard from uh, mayors throughout the, the, uh, the, the Commonwealth that's, that are interested in getting their communities involved? Yes. Um, again, local government is the lifeblood mm -hmm. of this Commonwealth. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, can, sh can truly ensure the success of the semi-quincentennial. And I'm not just saying yeah. that. I know. Well, um, I'm I a like little biased, that. like I said. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. Yes, I mean, mayors, county commissioners, local township supervisors have all wanted to get involved because they want their community, they want that pride mm -hmm. that everybody has there to, to, again, be part of the overall story. 
And what do you envision, you know, on, on that day and, you know, in 2026? <laughs> is there something that is going to be the big major cornerstone, or are we not allowed <laughs> to talk about that no, yet? No, so 2026, of course, July 4th, will be the big culmination of everything. But, um, you know, it's going to be a year for us. It's going to be January through December of events and different things going on. So, yes, the big event will be July 4th, Independence Hall, Philadelphia, the birthplace of democracy, as it should be. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll be really excited to be a part of that, of course, but it's going to be a year of events and celebrations. And I know Pennsylvania's involved, but have other states launched as equally as exciting events like this, or, or, is, or is ours is really a special? So Pennsylvania did kind of get out first. Um, there are about 30 other states that have a 250th organization, or you know, are there's there's plans to create one. Um, but Pennsylvania will lead the country as we did 250 years ago on the 250th efforts, and we're just really excited to be partnering with other states to ensure that we get as many national tourists here as possible and your excitement is <laughs> is making me excited is making I'm hoping making our viewers and everybody out there watching we want everyone to know that we have information on today's show on pahomepage.com we're under the newsmakers link so if you were interested in getting involved in one of the programs they're going to be listed there <laughs> yes. reach out to Cassandra and her team and they'll help guide guide anyone, any community out there, any individual to mm -hmm. uh, get involved. Yeah. So for everyone behind the scenes, I'm Jane M. Bugged. I want to thank you so much for making Newsmakers part of your day. And we'll talk again next time. And thank you, Cassandra, for Thanks being there. I really enjoyed me. having you.